Hello there, mother-in-law. I have a bone to pick with you about that new house Edward and I just moved into. Can you please explain why you sent us this enormous box of stuff that you never asked us about? What is this junk supposed to be anyway? Sure, the room is not being used for anything right now, but we have big plans to use it when we have a child. What? Are you referring to the stuff I sent you two days ago? Well, I talked to my son and he agreed to let us store it there for a short while since you guys had no immediate use for it. Yeah, well, it's taking up a lot of space in that room, and I have a different vision. I know we're going to make it our child's room in the future, but there's something else I want to use it for in the meantime. Oh, really? What are you going to be using it for? But Edwin told me it was perfectly fine because you had no concrete plans for that room, which is why I sent it to him. Huh? It's none of your business what I intend using the room for. And besides, it doesn't matter whether Edwin gave you permission because I never gave you permission. I'm the lady of the house, you know. Do you think you can just do whatever you want without consulting me? I understand. I suppose it was an oversight of me not to tell you anything about it. But Edwin said that he had already informed you. If that's the case, then I apologize, but could you please bear with it for just one week? I'll find a rental warehouse to keep the stuff in. No! Get out of our house this instant. I'm not going to let our house be your personal storage space for the week. What? Right this instant? I'm sorry, but that's unreasonable. I'm going to be using the room starting this afternoon, and I'm going to have a serious problem if you don't move it out by then. Get it out now, or else I'll tell Edwin. But Edwin himself said it was alright for me to keep the stuff there for a little while. Besides, you're demanding me to come and take the stuff right this instant? But I'm currently in Rome. What? Rome? What do you mean, Rome, huh? What on earth are you doing in Rome? There's something I need to take care of here before you come back. Even if I were to come and get it right now, it would already be nighttime when I get there. Oh, I see. You're on some kind of vacation to celebrate your retirement last week, right? And what do you mean? There's something you need to take care of? <laughs> You're the one making me laugh. Aren't you just a jobless housewife who does nothing all day? Huh? No, not at all. I'm a graphic designer, you see. Huh? Graphic designer? What in the world is a graphic designer? Is that a fancy term for someone who plays video games on their computer? I can never understand all this gadget stuff. Well, I don't care. Anyway, I digress. You won't be able to get it today, right? Yes, I'm afraid not. So, could you please just wait until I come back next week? Please, help me, Maya. No, I can't wait till next week. I told you. I will be using this room this afternoon, right? My parents are coming over. That's why you need to move this stuff right now. Fine, if you don't come right away, then I'll throw it out in the yard. What? Throw it all? Are you serious, Maya? And wait a minute, what if it starts raining? There are machines inside the box that can't get wet. I don't know, it's not my problem. It's your problem, so handle it yourself. Well, I'm just gonna flick it out of the second story window now. Huh? Couldn't you at least carry it outside? Why the hell do you need to fling it out of the window? There are expensive computers and other appliances inside the box that are going to break if you do that. So please, don't touch the box. I can't imagine how it's terrible when they're broken. It's your fault for sending us this massive box of stuff without my consent. <laughs> I need to go throw it out now, so goodbye. Dustin, please answer me right now. I need to talk about something very important. It's a nightmare. Mom, what's wrong? What makes you feel so anxious right now? Oh, our stuff that I sent to your brother's new house to be stored in is going to be thrown out by Maya. She said she's actually going to be using the vacant room from this afternoon. And so I need to take this stuff out right away. I'm in Rome, as you already know. So could you go and stop her for me? She said that she was going to fling them out of the second floor window. Our computers are doomed to be smashed if she does something like that. Hold on a second, Mom. What? How? What do you mean? She's going to fling our stuff outside the window? Are you kidding me? Didn't Edwin tell her that we'd be keeping the stuff there temporarily? What in the world is she thinking? I don't know the details, but it seems that Maya had no clue what the stuff was. She said she can't just let it stay in the room, so she's going to toss it in the yard. Seriously? Is that woman insane or what? I told you, it was a horrible idea for Edwin to marry a woman like that. Could you go and check on their house quickly? Hurry, before she tosses it out. 
I'm worried that something terrible will happen. All right, I'll try to get there as fast as possible. Mom, I was too late. I'm sorry, but... What? Sealing the cardboard box was fine, but the work computer and other such electronics are all shattered to pieces. Huh? Please say that just just a dream. Oh my god, I can't believe it. All the data is backed up in the cloud, so that's not a problem. But this stuff was very costly. I can't work without the computer, so I guess I'll have to buy a new one. But we're going to be needing the money soon. What a disaster, Dustin. Anyways, could you please take care of the business with the real estate company as planned? Mom, I'll tell my brother about what happened and ask him to pay for the damages his wife caused. Alright, I'll handle it. Now, I can't believe that these things happened. How awful today is. I understand. Anyways, thanks mom. I suppose I'm going to have to clean up this mess in the yacht now. We probably need to rent some kind of storage room for a while. I'll do that. Don't worry mom. We probably need to rent a truck as well. Okay, thank you Dustin. If I don't have you, I won't know how to handle this mess. Mom, you need to pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. I just had a very shocking and horrifying conversation with Edwin. How did he react? What did he tell you? Well, you're going to be speechless by this. But Edwin is actually in Sicily right now. He left for a business trip yesterday and he's stranded there for an indefinite amount of time. Can you even wrap your head around that? What? Are you kidding me? No, mom. I'm not kidding. I begged him to come back home as soon as possible. But he said there were barely any flights available, and the earliest he can get here is in three days. What? That's not the worst part. He also said that he finally revealed to Maya about our situation. But he asked me to leave our stuff in that room for now because they were planning to use it as a nursery for their future child. Oh, I see. There's more, mom. I made a daring decision to go to the new house earlier today just to snoop on what Maya was up to. And? Did you notice anything odd? Yes, mom, I did. There was a man and a woman around your age who entered the house with enormous boxes in their hands. A man and a woman my age? Yes, mom. I'm absolutely certain they were Maya's parents. What? It's true, mom. I recognized them because I went to the house with Edwin a few times before to ask for their approval for our marriage. So I know what they look like. It was unmistakably them. Maybe they're just dropping by. Really, mom? Do you think that's normal? They brought so much stuff with them that it looked like they were settling in. And this is right after she threw away our stuff. I think she's trying to exploit the fact that Edwin is away. I have a terrible feeling about this, mom. Something is very wrong. Mom, can you believe this? Dustin came here and snatched away all your stuff, mother-in-law. Yes, he did. Dustin's stuff was also in there as well, so he had every right to. No way. You can't be serious. Really? Are you telling me that I was this close to being fooled by your devious scheme to torment me and destroy my life? What are you talking about? What do you mean you were this close to tormenting you? Don't act innocent with me, you old hag. You sent me all this stuff without my approval. Took up a lot of space in your room. You were planning on barging your way into my house after that, weren't you? What? It's my parents who are going to be moving into our new house. They're the ones who are welcome here. Um, excuse me? That's the first time I've ever heard about this. Of course it is. I didn't tell you anything. <laughs> Does Edwin know about this? He's currently on a business trip to Sicily, so I haven't told him yet. But I'm sure he'll agree with me. But aren't your parents the ones who are forcefully moving in? It's not forceful if I gave them my permission. <laughs> but fine. I'll be generous and offer you a compromise. A compromise? What are you talking about, Maya? Listen carefully. If you give me $30,000 to celebrate our new house being built, then I'll let you live with us. <laughs> Excuse me? $30,000? Are you losing your mind? 
Well, if you don't like my terms, then you could forget about moving in. You had to leave the company house that you were living in until now when you retired, so you're stuck in a temporary apartment, right? I know you were probably snooping on us and waiting for a chance to move in, but it looks like you're out of luck since I, the person who needs to be the most cautious of you, has already seen your tricks. Huh? It's up to you whether you're going to have a tranquil retirement or not. <laughs> I mean, even if you pay me the money, I'll only be giving you the minuscule room under the stairs, though. I see. I never knew people could be this delusional and paranoid. Huh? What do you mean delusional and paranoid? You're the one who's delusional and paranoid, mother-in-law, for thinking I wouldn't notice what you were trying to do. Ugh, I don't care anymore. It's pointless to explain anything to you. Oh, so you're giving up on moving in with us? Are you sure about that? <laughs> How are you going to survive if you have no job? I have another son, Dustin, so I'm fine. And I do have a job, Maya. A very important one. Huh? You do? <laughs> are you joking? Anyway... Good for you, for always getting along so well with your second son at your age. <laughs> All right then, why don't you two just vanish from our lives already? All right, fine, but I'm going to be asking you for payment for the work computer and other stuff you broke soon. Hold on a second, what do you mean by work computer? You'll find out when you see the invoice I send you. Goodbye, good for nothing daughter-in-law. Hey, what's the meaning of this, mother-in-law? What do you mean I need to pay you $30,000? Oh, so you finally received the invoice I mailed you, Maya. I don't understand. Why do I need to pay you that amount of money? But it's all spelled out on the paper. What's so difficult to understand? The $30,000 is payment for smashing the two high-spec computers and the appliances that they came with, and also for business interference, because we weren't able to do any work because of your actions. What? $30,000 is a steal for the damages you caused. I didn't know this would happen. But I thought Edwin explained it to you before and after you broke our stuff by text. He did say something, but... He told you that we were only going to keep the stuff there temporarily until I found a new place to live, right? And that Dustin owns a small-scale business. And that we were going to move the company's headquarters to Rome since I had retired. And that I was going to move to Rome as well to assist him. There's no way I could have grasped that. Huh? Edwin showed me the text he sent you. It looks like he explained it all very lucidly to you, though. Um, he was a bit ambiguous and perplexing to me, I swear. Edwin says that you never pay attention to him when he tries to explain things to you face to face. So he purposely explained it to you by text, so you wouldn't have any reason to deny that he told you everything. And yet you're still asserting that you didn't understand anything. Either you're lying and you don't want to understand at all, or you're living in your own delusional world, and you only see what you want to see, even if you are to blame me for that now. Why don't you go back and read our conversation again? No, better yet, read it repeatedly until it finally registers. Please, can you forgive me this time? I know it's my fault now, so can you please? It's too late. It won't make any difference anymore. Mother-in-law, something terrible's happened. Oh my god, Edwin just divorced me. My parents already sold our house because we thought we'd be living in the new house. But now we have nowhere to go. And none of us have a job. So we won't be able to support our parents from now on. Please, mother-in-law. Could you tell Edwin to get back together with me? I promise I won't do such a thing again. And I'll always do as he says. I admit I was wrong, so help us. Oh, hello, Maya. I'm not your mother-in-law anymore, so don't call me that. <laughs> you say that you're sorry and that you won't do such a thing again. But how are we supposed to believe you? They say people deserve second chances, but us helping you would no longer be your second chance, but your hundredth. This was your biggest and most flashiest mess up so far. But this isn't the first time that you've just ignored what Edwin told you and pretended not to understand him, right? Please, I know what I did was wrong. and I really do promise to change. Just give me one last chance. If I mess up again, I promise you'll never hear from me and see my parents ever again. Please help us. So sorry, Maya. <laughs> Our family has already given you too many chances. Until now. Especially Edwin. 
He believed that you were a good person at heart and only seemed mean and arrogant, which is why he married you against both my and Dustin's wishes. So don't expect us to help you when even Edwin has given up. What? But please, just one more chance. You see, I'm also currently in Rome. I'll be working at the CEO's company, so can you forget about the $30,000, please? What? Why are you in Rome? Couldn't you just have found a job in our hometown? If you were willing to work, after all, there are plenty of jobs that you don't need much skill to do. You could work as a cashier or something. Oh, and you know how to make bread, right, Maya? Why not work at a bakery? And besides, I'm not the person you should be asking about this. Ask Dustin, please. He's the one in charge of hiring employees. I wouldn't get your hopes up, though. You don't know how to use computers, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know how to use computers, but you can just teach me. The work Dustin's company does mostly has to do with graphic design. You're not going to be able to do any work if you can't use a computer. And teaching someone the necessary skills to do this job from scratch is very difficult. You wouldn't be paid much at the beginning, even if Dustin was kind enough to hire you. Um, can you use computer mother-in-law? Is it really that hard? Using a computer itself isn't that hard. Even a child could do it. But I'm afraid that the skills required for a position at Dustin's company are quite advanced and aren't something that can just be taught to someone. And yes, I used to do something similar in my old job, so it isn't a problem. I've been doing this stuff for years, you see. Then I can serve tea or make copies or something. I'll really do anything you want me to do. I'll do my best. Sorry, but we can serve tea and make copies on our own. And besides, if you really mean what you're saying right now, then I don't understand why you don't just find a job in our hometown with that enthusiasm. I'm sure there's someone that would be willing to hire you. Just don't be as arrogant to them as you used to be with me, though. But at least ask Duskin first, then reply to me. He's sure to say yes if he can just see that I really mean it when I say I'm trying my best. I already did. He sat at the desk next to me and he said, no, sorry. But Dustin never did really like you, Maya. We can't have our team of employees hating each other, you know? He said that he wouldn't hire you even if you did know how to use a computer. Ugh, that's so mean of him. And to think I was going to change and be a better person if he hired me. Not anymore, though. I see. So, you weren't sincere when you said all those things back there. Anyway, you need to pay us the $30,000 soon. So, please, be sure to pay it on time. Yeah, but I can't do something else for you then? There has to be something you want me to do. Yes, I want you to pay $30,000 on time. I'm currently doing work, so goodbye. <laughs> Hold on a second. Please, mother-in-law. I don't have any money. We don't even have a place to live since Edwin kicked us out. Please, mother-in-law, I'm just an uneducated housewife. I won't be able to find another job so easily. My parents, too, they're already too old to work. You're our only hope for now. Please reply to my message, Mom! From what I heard, Maya and her parents had no choice but to sell their old house at a low price before moving into a new house with Edwin bought for them. They are now living in a shabby and cramped apartment with the little money they got from the house sale. But their situation got even worse when Maya had to pay me $30,000 as part of the divorce settlement, which wiped out almost all of their savings. The only source of income they could depend on was the pitiful pension of her parents, which barely covered their living expenses. Maya refused to work even after the divorce since she had never done anything but being a housewife all her life, which led to constant arguments and fights with her parents who urged her to find a job as soon as possible. Maya couldn't stand their digging anymore and severed all ties with her parents. She was then thrown out of their apartment, but she still didn't want to work. So, in a desperate attempt to live an easy and comfortable life, she tried to seduce a rich man who was already married to someone else. His wife discovered their affair and sued Maya for a huge amount of euros as an alimony. Maya had no way to pay the money and was left with no other option but to work at a brothel. Me and Dustin, on the other hand, are having the time of our lives in Rome. The city is so lively and full of excitement. Unlike the boring and slow countryside, everything here feels like it's moving at a faster pace. Dustin's business flourished since we moved to Rome and he hired three times more employees in the first year alone. My eldest son, on the other hand, is enjoying his bachelorhood in our hometown. He said that he loves having so much free time to do whatever he wants and he even learned a new hobby, chess. I hope that he finds a woman who truly appreciates and loves my wonderful son, Edwin, and not someone selfish and ungrateful like Maya.